Good morning, everybody. It's Abby from our Alaskan Oasis Homeschool Collective, and you've made it to week two of the Finding Our Hearts workshop series. And we're really excited to have you here and be sharing with you today the resources, tools, and get a little bit of practice with those tools that we introduced in week one. Today is Friday, October 15th, 2021, and we are coming up on the full Hunter's Moon, which will be happening this week on the 20th. And week two is all about exploring possibilities and really trying to um, you know, take the tools that we learned last week uh, and then start to apply them in new and different ways so you can get experience with them in a different way. And hopefully be able to, once you're feeling comfortable and empowered, you can pull off that tool when and where you need it and use it to your benefit and to benefit your family. Today is International Day of the Rural Woman, which I am, and I know many of you homeschooling families are. Um, it's also National Cake Decorating Day. And so if you have that skill in your wheelhouse, and even if you don't, maybe make a plan to make a cake this weekend and decorate it and share pictures with us. That would be really fun. And it's also National Grouch Day. Like, yes, really, the grouch. Um, and if you know his theme song, sing it now. <laughs> I am Abby. Um, we are here in Clinket Ani, the traditional homeland of the Clinket Haida and Simshian people. We synchronize our workshops and all the work we do to the moon cycle. The beginning of the month during the new moon we set our intentions during the first quarter moon first quarter moon we explore possibilities that's the week we're in right now next week during the full moon that's when we'll be making some decisions and really um you know kind of, uh honing in on exactly what it is that we want to do and then in the final week the final the final quarter moon is when we rest and reflect and digest and prepare ourselves for the next month to come as many of you know, I employ and I try to empower others to utilize a humanistic approach to life. I consider myself a behavioral scientist, a creative writer, and a data-driven optimist above all else. So, thank you so much for being here. And I enjoy, um, I'm enjoying this day sharing with you. Fridays, so every day we have a daily challenge. And so motor, we have got motors on Monday, turned up Tuesday, wake zone Wednesday, throttle it Thursday, full board Friday, um, sales down Saturday, and sextants out Sunday. Um, and every day in our Facebook group, you will get a um, get our daily challenges. And so today I just wanted to Make sure that you are all aware of that, that that's happening. Um, for those of you who are not on Facebook and don't feel comfortable with that modality, that it's totally okay. You also will get them in your email. Um, so you will not miss out on these opportunities just for some fun things to integrate into your homeschool day. So I really hope that you enjoy them and then you enjoy learning along with us. So this Friday, um, we always share, on Fridays, we share a fact of the week. The fact of the week this week is that October 15th, 1966 was the day that the Black Panther Party was founded. And you can check out more information about the Black Panther um, Foundation and um, all of the, uh, a bunch of things about it, especially their 10 point plan, which I think you will find very, very interesting and find some nuggets of, nuggets of wisdom in there and, and gems to share with the group. Um, like I said, it's um, also International Day of the Rural Woman. National Cake Decorating Day and National Grouch Day. Um, and I wanted to kind of share with you a, a little, a couple things. So when, when I'm going through and I'm planning for the weeks ahead and you know, what we're going to do and the things that I'm going to share, I always go to this um, with website called Brownie Locks. And on Brownie Locks has all of the observances, you know, silly ones, serious ones um, for every day of the week and the, um, you know, what's going on during the weeks. And so I like to, you know, pull out ones that resonate with me and I hope that they resonate with you as well. I try to find three um, that somebody, you know, you'll hopefully at least resonate with one of them. 
Um, when doing a little bit of research on International Day of the Rural Woman, um, I you know went to the UN website that is linked here, and what I what there was you know the kind of a quote on that page that really struck me was the following. Gender equality and empowering women is critical ingredient in the fight against extreme poverty, hunger, and malnutrition. And I thought this was a perfect segue and perfect tie into the work that we are doing. Um, because although not all homeschool families are led by a woman, we know that many are. And, um, and so this, uh, the work that we do uh, teaching you tools, supporting you, empowering you, that this is our goal. Our goal by doing this work, having this homeschool collective is, is to empower you with the end goal is ending poverty. And we know that poverty can be ended by empowering with skills and tools and education like literacy. So this is exactly why we're here. And so I thought this one was perfect. Um, when it came to my second choice, Nat National Cake Decorating Day, it's October. I am a big fan of Halloween and all things spooky and creepy. We have been on a, um, a Halloween movie thrills and chills kick this month. And every day we're trying to find a new, um, a new scary movie or show to watch, which has been really fun exploring new things. And but one of my most favorite things during the month of October is um, all of the really cool shows on the Food Network that have to do with making spooky candies and cakes. And it is really, really fun. If you have not had an opportunity to watch one of the Halloween specials, like Halloween Wars and things like that, um, I encourage you to go out and do that. Um, get some, embed some fun, um, some fun activities in your daily day, day-to-day -day life with homeschool. Um, and then last but not least is National Grouch Day. <laughs> um, let's, I don't know if I can see it, but who loves trash? Anything, something, and something, and something. I don't remember all the lyrics, but I'm sure that you do. It brings back lots of childhood memories for many of us. Um, and I hope that um, that it brings a smile to your face and resonates with you and maybe get out there and find a Sesame Street episode featuring the Grouch um, or go to the Grouch's page. <laughs> There's actually the, a page about National Grouch Day. So I hope you are able to celebrate and learn and share some nuggets. If you go on to, we have a, we have a, um, Facebook page for our Alaskan Oasis that's open to everybody. Um, and then we have a private Facebook group that's open only to our collective members. And so go in there, share what you share what you learn, share what you're celebrating this month or this week or this day. Um, and we look forward to um, reading your contributions. <clears throat> the other thing that I wanted to point out just really quickly here in relation to a specifically international a day of the rural woman um, is that the theme of the celebration this year is rural women cultivating good food for all. And so I wanted to bring actually something to your attention that is happening for us here locally on Prince of Wales Island. And I would like to put a call to action out there, which we actually did earlier this week on Monday, which was Indigenous Peoples Day. And I brought to your attention that... Um, we have a, we're involved in a new campaign called Save Fish Egg. Um, Fish Egg Island is just outside of Craig. And that is the area that the um, herring come in to spawn. And fish egg harvesting is a driver of our economy. And it's also a very, very imp important food source for our people here on the island. And so if you were interested in getting involved in that campaign in any way, please do reach out to me. And even if, uh, you know, the, the way that you can contribute is to share our content and share our campaign when we have things that are shareable, we really, really appreciate 
um, you know, just one little thing, if everybody can do one little thing um, to towards the greater good, we can make a huge difference. So thank you. And I look forward to updating you all in the future about the Save the Shape campaign. We always like to recenter ourselves, reorganize before we get into any conversations, um, because it's important that we are clear about who we are and how we show up in this world. And so as a reminder, our agreements as a collective are to protect, uplift, inspire, and empower others. We listen for understanding and we take responsibility. We are committed to be, being more impactful with our actions. At times we pause to regather our thoughts or focus rather than just responding right in the moment. We drop gems in the chat. So when you hear something and you're like, ooh, I wanna save that thought for later, just like chat those things, um, you know, save those little thoughts and quotes. And if you're here in person and the, um, it, there's an opportunity to speak, you are welcome to always pass. And we always use sound verbal behavior when we are engaging in conversation. I mean, this is just thoughtful and deliberate speech that really resonates with other people as opposed to noxious verbal behavior, which really kind of puts the brakes on any further conversation. So our big question to you and to all of our collective members is, are you down to FBT? If you say yes, that means that we all agree to for really listen, be radical, and take action. These are our three kind of our key phrases, our key expectations, commitments to each other. We for really listen, we be radical, and we take action. And that's how we get things done. It's always important to also um, remind ourselves about what our values are and why we're here and what we do, how we show up in the world. And at our, our Alaskan Oasis Homeschool Collective, we act with pride. And what that means is that we are acting committedly together with precision, respect, integrity, determination, and enthusiasm. And so I hope that that um, that those values resonate with you as much as they resonate with me, because this is what keeps me centered and making sure that I'm always acting in accordance with my values. And then I can check in with myself if something's feeling off. I'm like, oh, I'm not really sure if things are going really the right way and go back to my values. Am I acting with pride? Am I acting committedly together with precision, respect, integrity, determination, and enthusiasm? Yes. Keep going. No. Take a pause and rest, reflect, and make a new plan. All right, friends. So I've got something special for you today. If you remember, I am now a PAX Tools community trainer, and one of our PAX tools is PAX Focus. And we have a harmonica that is a sound cue to gain our focus. So if you listen with me. I would like to introduce you to our Motivantra for our Alaskan Oasis. I've actually made up a little jingle to go with this, so you can read along. The words that I'm going to sing aren't exactly what's up here on the screen, but I like to put music to words because it helps me remember. And this is a really good strategy when you are teaching your kids, you're at home school, and you really want your kids to remember something have them make up a little song and that can be a really fun mnemonic. So without further ado, here we go. We live resourcefully and sustainably. We embody peace, love, and joy. We effectively advocate for meaningful change and connection. My name is Mistra. I know who I am. I am strong and self-assured. I am confident and motivated, happy, vibrant, and full of life. I totally love and accept myself. I know I'm all I can be. 
I would love for you to join me. Come on, friends, to clink it on me. That's where we'll be. I hope you enjoyed that as much as I enjoyed singing it. All right, friends. So today we have three guiding questions and uh, we have some activities that we're going to do in, um, to explore these guiding questions. So our first guiding question is, what is our ideal homeschool schedule? And we're going to be utilizing the ACT matrix to explore possibilities around this question. Our second question is, how can we make our days more organized, productive, and most importantly, fun? And we're going to use the PAX shared vision tool to explore possibilities about that question. And then finally, we are going to um, answer the, talk about the question, where do we want to be in 10 years? And we're going to kind of, we're actually going to start writing our stories um, and make a commitment to finishing those stories together um, as individuals or as families. And this can be a really, really helpful tool at getting us to kind of think outside of the here and now, look forward and make this big vision about where we want to be in 10 years that is aligned with our values. So we always know where we're going um, and how much closer we are to getting to the places that we want to go. <laughs> Okay, who's ready for our first guiding question, which is, what is our ideal homeschool schedule? We're going to use the ACT matrix to explore possibilities about this question. So let's review first what the ACT matrix is and how it's used and why it's important. So the ACT matrix is a tool that is used to make group decisions. And so this is something that can be used when you have a question that you want answered, you have a, uh, you have a problem that you need, to, I, you need to identify some potential solutions for. This is a really, really, really good tool for having those conversations and exploring some possibilities and making decisions together. And so we always start down here in the, in the bottom right-hand quadrant. This is where we list our priorities, our values, and our goals as, um, as a group. And then we move up to the top right quadrant, which is box number two. This is where we list the actions, the things that we can do that move us towards those priorities, values, and goals. We then move over to box three, the top left quadrant. These are the actions that move us away from our priorities, values, and goals. And then finally, we go down to quadrant four in the bottom left-hand corner, which is thoughts, feelings, and barriers which impact us, which cause or that we have when we're moving away, um, that those are the things that we can notice and help us stay more in alignment with our values. Because when we can, when we can more quickly notice when we're pulling away from the things that matter to us, that's, it's easier to course correct. And by putting all of this in one place, putting this all on paper, it can be really, really helpful to orient us and everybody and make sure that everybody feels and knows that their input is valued and it's heard and it's documented and it's part of the bigger plan as we're making decisions. So let's go ahead and get started and, and, and model how this would be done to address this question, what is our ideal homeschool schedule? Okay, so what we would do first is we would have our people that we want to talk to about this. So it might be the, um, the parental figures, the guardians in the house, the children in the house, any aunties, uncles, grandma, grandpa, um, you know, grandparents who are involved, anyone who is really involved in your day-to-day um, -day homeschool that is that should be involved in kind of coming up with the ideal schedule for the homeschool. 
because there is nothing that will get you in more trouble than making decisions on your own and your, you know, in your own little corner and then coming into the room and really dictating what, you know, what you think is going to be the way to do it. That's, I am sure that you all have experienced approaching, making decisions in that way and have found it to be somewhat effective, but usually not in the long term. So this is a new tool, a new strategy, a different way of approaching making decisions that we hope you will find extremely, extremely helpful for your future in making decisions. So we would start down here in our priorities, values, and goals box. And we would ask the question to the group, what is our ideal homeschool schedule? And then we might even, um, because sometimes just answering that question right off the top of your head, that might be a very difficult thing to do. Um, and this is where the PAX tool, Beat the Timer, comes in and can be a very, very useful tool. So on your PAX Tools app, which you can download for free on any device, um, there is the Beat the Timer. If you don't have the PAX Tool app, I would highly encourage you to download it. But in, in the meantime, if you don't already have it, you can simply pull out a timer. And what how this is useful is you can actually set the timer for thinking time before people are sharing out. And this is a good way for us to take a pause and think to ourselves first before sharing out. Um, so we're really, really clear about what it is that we want to contribute. So I might sit everybody down and say, okay, everybody, we're going to use the act, act matrix. Um, we, we, you know, we need to make some decisions together about what our homeschool schedule is going to look like. And so we want to get everybody's input. So everybody has their own piece of the paper. You've got your markers, crayons, pencils, whatever writing implement you prefer. And I want you to think for three minutes, what are your priorities, values, and goals when it comes to your homeschool schedule? What do you want to make sure we do? Okay. And then you would set the timer and literally give people three minutes of boop, silence, throw away the key, of think time. Okay. And at the end of three minutes, then that's when people can, that they can share out their ideas and their contributions. The other PAX tool that will come in very, very handy when you are doing this is um, PAX sticks. And those are just a simple way to get people to contribute and give people equal speaking time. So you might have your pack sticks with your family names on them, and you're going to pull one out and say, oh, okay, Joe, it's your turn. Tell us, you know, tell us one thing, one priority, value, and goal. And Joe tells you that, and you put that down, and we're going to go through one at a time. Okay, next is Abby. Okay, Abby, you tell us one priority, value, or goal. And you continue to go round and round the group in whatever way makes most sense to you and your family um, and get the input from the group and making sure that not one person is um, dominating the conversation. You can kind of keep it popcorn style. One idea, move on to the next one. One idea, move on to the next one. So you can move pretty quickly through this process. Okay, so let's say that we are doing that and we are um, uh, now we're going to document everybody's input. Okay, so what are priorities, values, and goals um, when it comes to our ideal homeschool schedule? Um, let's say it is to get um, academics done early. We want to get those academics done out of the way early. We've got our, you know, we've got our, um, the core content that we've got to do. We've got our um, fluency practice and we're going to move on with our day. We want to make sure that there are shared meals embedded into our school day. Okay. What else are our priorities, values, and goals related to, um, 
the, to our homeschool schedule, let's say another home, another priority value and goal is to make sure that there's some sort of fun adventure or activity every day. All right, so like we did last time, we're gonna stop at three to, um, to keep this example um, clear, concise, and simple. So we're gonna say that our family came together and we decided that our top three priorities, values, and goals are to get academics done early in the day, to have shared meals embedded throughout the day, and to make sure that we have at least one fun adventure or activity daily to make sure that we have, we're doing something fun every single day. Okay, great. That is wonderful. Then we move up to box two. And again, the question here is, what are things that we can do or what things, what are things that we will do that will keep us moving towards these priorities, values, and goals? Okay. Again, we can use beat the timer, or any sort of timer to give us some think time. You know, we're going to think about it first, and then we're going to document people's input. Okay, so now we're gonna we're gonna go around and give everybody an opportunity to share their input into this big, um, into this uh, decision making tool, and here's how it's going to go. So we'll say. What are some actions that we can take? What are th some things that we will be doing that will move us towards getting academics done early in the day? How about um, getting to bed, get to bed early and wake up on time? That is absolutely something that we could do in order to, in order to, um, get that done, get academics done early, go to bed, get to bed early, get a good night's sleep, wake up on time. Absolutely. What are some other things that we can do to get academics done early? We can make a plan the night before. Make a plan for what you're going to do. What are, what are those academics going to be? So when you wake up, get up, you don't have any planning organization to do. You just have execution. Just do the thing get her done, move on with your day. All right, so now let's move on to our second priority value and goal, the shared meals embedded. Um, what are some actions, what are some things that we might do that move us towards getting having shared meals embedded within our day? Maybe we choose the Choose the meal preparer for the week. So maybe your family decides that it is, you know, the, the only way to really make this happen consistently is to assign meal the meal job to one of the family members. And so maybe every week that's a new person who's responsible for planning and preparing the meals and making sure that this is done consistently. The other thing that can be done is to actually do a meal prep day. And so this might make it much easier um, and more likely that you we're going to have shared meals embedded within our day. If the meals are already done and they're already planned out and they're already ready to go, um, so then, then it's just about heating it up, coming together, and, and enjoying our company, enjoying company together. All right, and last but not least, fun adventure or activity daily. This might be another time when you are choosing somebody in your family to choose the, the activity planner. Maybe that is a job for the day. Okay. And then maybe in similarly to meal prep day, maybe you have an activity prep day. And that might be work planning today for our adventures next week, or we're planning today for our meals next week. So we're thinking ahead a little bit and it doesn't have to be where you have to get, you know, um, 
Yeah, you don't, you have to be super, super parent, super organizer where every, you know, everything's cut out and pretty. And um, we realize that that is not the reality for most families, but putting just a little bit of thought into what this ideal schedule, this ideal day or week will look like can really, really go a long way um, in getting people excited too um, and kind of improve, you know, um, bolstering that motivation to motivation to do the things. Um, so we are, you know, we're productive and, effic- and effective in what we're doing, but we're also having fun and enjoying our time together because that is one of the best benefits of homeschool is all of the QT, the quality time that you get with your family. Um, and so this is, a, this is a way that we could make the best of it, make the most of it. Okay, so now that we've talked about, we've gotten all those things that we're going to do that we could do um, to move towards our priorities, values, and goals, we move on to number three. What are some things that we might do or that we that we're likely to do? We need to be on the lookout for that we're doing to move away from our priorities, values, and goals. <clears throat> so let's explore that a little bit. So what are some things that would be getting in the way of getting academics done early? Mm. No plan. Not organized. Definitely not going to get you any closer to your values and goals. What are some other things that you might do or not do that would move you away um, from that kind of, you know, kind of some, some of these things might just be the opposite of the things you would do is uh, uh, stay up late, right? Stay up late. Um, sleep in, right? Or some something of that nature. Okay. What about shared meals together? Um, so something that might get in the way of sharing meals together is overscheduling, right? We're too busy. Um, and not, not planning or preparing. That is absolutely going to be something that would get in the way. What about fun adventures? Um, isolating, not calling your friends, avoiding friends. Oh no, you don't want to do that. We want to really, we want to be reaching out to our friends, right? And what is something else that would pull us away from fun adventures? Um, Let's say weather, okay. Oh, and we're avoiding things because of the weather. Well, we don't have the right gear. Don't have the gear. One of the, one of the, my most favorite um, slogans from Forest School is, There's no bad weather. There's just bad gear. And that is so true up here in Alaska where we're at, because if we could let our days and our lives be controlled by the weather, which admittedly I do, we all do. If it's rainy and it's cold and it's dark, it's so much nicer and easier sometimes just to curl up in your bed. And and that is absolutely okay. No shame, no blame. This is a judgment-free zone. Uh, we're all human. We all have, all have needs and we all like to be warm and cozy. Um, but that really shouldn't be an excuse for not doing something fun. Oh, it's raining. We can't go for a hike. I call BS on that because what can we do? We have rain jackets. We have warm layers. We've got all sorts of things that we can do. And most of the time when we get out there, it often happens that the weather will clear and just because it's raining now and it's cold doesn't mean it's going to be raining and cold all day. Get up, get out of the house, do something fun. Make an adventure out of every day. All right. <clears throat> and then last but not least, we are going, we would do the same thing. Give, our, give ourselves some time to think and consider our, what we want to input into this section and then really go into what are the thoughts feelings, and barriers um, that we might be thinking, feeling, and experiencing when we are moving away from our priorities, values, and goals. Mm -hmm. So let's think about it. What are some things that we have 
that we could that might that we might think oh oh we might be feeling overwhelmed this is overwhelming oh we're feeling disorganized oh we're not eating together we're feeling disconnected oh we're feeling like we're just going through the motions Oh, nobody wants to do anything. Oh, we're bored. Okay, so these are all thoughts and feelings that, again, we can notice when we're feeling like, I'm feeling overwhelmed. Ooh, time out. Why am I feeling overwhelmed? I'm feeling overwhelmed because I'm moving away from my priorities, values, and goals. How am I moving away from my priorities, values, and goals? Oh, I've been staying up late or I've been sleeping in. Something's been going on. Okay, take a time out. How are we going to get back over to box number two? What are the how getting back towards the positive actions? What can we do to get closer to our priorities, values, and goals? So I hope I hope that this was helpful, this walkthrough of how you would take a question that is relevant to all of us, what is our ideal homeschool schedule, and begin to um, begin the conversation towards making decisions, utilizing the ACT matrix to explore possibilities and have this conversation about what we, what we value, what we want to do, what we want to do more of, how we, can, how we can move towards those priorities, values, and goals, what it will look like when we're not moving towards those priorities, values, and goals, and what are those thoughts, feelings, and barriers that will come up when we're not in alignment with our goals that will act as our um, things that we can notice to get us back on track. Okay, now on to our second guiding question for today. Our second guiding question is, how can we make our days more organized, productive, and fun? And for this question, we are going to be utilizing the PAX tool shared vision to explore possibilities. To review the PAX tool shared vision, this is a tool that we can use in order to create a shared expectations of each other. And so this is a way to really get, um, get everybody's input on what things would really look like, feel like, and sound like, and what you would be doing um, um, in order to do these, to do the things that we want to do. And so if we want to make our days more organized, productive, and fun, what are the things that we could do? And what are the things that we don't want to do um, that would be that would be not organized, not productive, and not fun? So let's go ahead and get started. So the way that this one works is you do something very similar to the approach. You can use your PAX tool beat the timer in order to give us, give, give everybody who is involved in the conversation a, a couple minutes in order to think and plan before they provide their input. It's a really good strategy. And then you can also use the pack sticks in order to um, give people an equal opportunity to participate and get their input heard. So not one or more one person is dominating the conversation. Okay, so those are really good tools to get us centered. Um, and then the question is: first, we're going to talk about, okay, everybody, where this is our guiding question. What can we do to make our fun days more organized, productive, and fun? And we're first gonna talk about the more. What do we want to see more of, feel more of, hear more of, and do more of? That would be indicating that we are more organized, productive, and fun in our homeschool. You would give your, your group um, a few minutes of think time, and then you would gather their input. And then you'd pose the question again. Okay, so what, what 
would we, what can we do to make our days less organized, less productive and less fun? Um, give people think time and then um, gather their input into this chart. So let's get started and um, think about uh, or and add to this PAX tool shared vision in regarding to this question. Okay, so if our days were more organized, productive, and fun, what would we see more of? We would see more action. We would see more uh, work done. We would see more smiles. We would see more checklists. We would see more rewards. We would see more mm, dancing. We would see more jumping for joy. Okay. So I've got seven in there. We'll um, keep this keep this going. Now on to feel. What would we feel more if we were more organized? What would we feel more of if we were organized, productive, and fun? Our days were more organized. We would feel accomplished. We would feel motivated. We would feel proud. We would feel connected. We would feel joyful. We would feel Mm. On top of on top of our games, on top of the world, and we would feel ready for more. And then on to the next box here. If our days were more organized, productive, and fun, what would we hear more of? We would hear more quiet working. Focus, focused. We would hear more laughter. We would hear more uh pencils moving we might hear more typing we might hear more music we might hear more filing and we might hear more praise And last but not least, if our days were more organized, productive, and fun, what would we be doing more of? We would be doing more uh, lessons. We would be doing more, um, we'd be doing more uh, work. But we would also be doing more fun stuff. We would also be doing more of what makes us happy. We will be doing more organizing. We will be doing more planning. And we will be doing more adventures. Awesome. All right, and then once that um, once that box is all filled up that side of the chart, then we move on to the bottom part of the chart. Again, give people time 
a few minutes. It could be a few minutes per box. It could be a few minutes per, um, uh, per section, whatever works for you and your family. Everybody is in a different place and needs different things, needs different amounts of time and think time. So take it easy and go at the pace that works for you and your family. Okay. So then our question is, what would we see if our days were less organized, less productive, and less fun? What would we see? We might see more paper everywhere. <clears throat> we might see uh, undone work. We might see sad faces. We might see um, nobody. <laughs> Everybody's gone to their own room. We might see um, messes. And it's important to remember that we're, you know, the goal is to have way more in the more section than the less section. So we're going to stop at five. We had seven of in the more category and we'll stop at five. So we'll do three to five in each one. So now let's look at the feel. If we were not organized, not productive and not fun, what would we be feeling less of? Or, or what would we be feeling that we wouldn't want to be feeling? Um, if our, if our days were less organized, less productive, and less fun, we would be feeling um, overwhelmed. We might be feeling angry. We might be feeling shameful. Whoa. I'm not sure how any of that happened. Okay. Uh, let's try it one again. Okay. So that one's going to have to be edited, but we'll go with it again. All right. <clears throat> So now on to the next box, which is what we want to feel less of. And so if our, day, if our days were less organized, less productive, and less fun, how would we be feeling? We would, might be feeling overwhelmed. We might be feeling disorganized. We might be feeling ashamed. We might be feeling disconnected. And we might be feeling frustrated. Okay. Now on to here. If we were less organized, less productive, and less fun, what would we be hearing? We might be hearing um, arguing. We might be hearing complaining. We might be hearing blaming. We might be hearing whining. And we might be hearing uh, punishment because we didn't get our work done. All right. And if we were less organized, less productive, less fun, what would we be doing? We would be forcing compliance. Okay. We might be uh, 
crumpling work. We might do what might we be doing if we were less organized, less productive, and less fun. We might be pushing buttons. We might be doing a lot of um, alone work or isolating. And we might be engaging in some self-soothing behavior. Whatever that, whatever that means for you. Sometimes self, you know, self, self-soothing can be a good thing, but sometimes self-soothing can be, um, you know, because we're not feeling great and we don't have a solution for it. So we have some self-soothing going on. All right. So this is a really good, this is a really good start. Hopefully this has been a helpful example of how we would use the PAX tool shared vision to explore possibilities around the question, how can we make our days more organized, productive, and fun? And so at the end of the day, at the end of the conversation, we would say, okay, this is what we want to see, feel, hear, and do more of. This is what we want to see, hear, feel, and do less of. And now we know like, when we start feeling and seeing and doing these things, we might need to go back to the drawing board and have a conversation, revisit this chart, and um, talk about how we can get back to the, the top part of the, the top part of the chart. How can we do more of these things? How can we get back in alignment? How can we do, how can we make our days more organized, more productive, and more fun, most importantly? I hope you found this helpful. All right, friends, it is our last guiding question of the day. And this question is, where do we want to be in 10 years? years. And so by writing our stories and kind of envisioning what the future will look like, what our future self will look like, and what maybe what we might see here, feel, and to be doing more of in 10 years, this is a really good exercise to do by yourself and to do as a family to really start to hone in on kind of what is that like what is the end goal? What's the destination to towards which you are heading? And so this can kind of give us a way to calibrate and orient to our, you know, get our bearings where we want to go. And then by having this story written out, having this vision, kind of um, having explored it and put, you know, put things on paper or audio recording, it's gonna really help us to clarify for ourselves what it is that we want, what is it that we don't want, and gives us a, a tool to check in with to make sure that along the way, you're regularly checking back in with our vision to determine whether or not we're on track, we're on course, or whether we need to do a little bit of course correction and nudge ourselves back into, back into alignment, if you will. So the way that I like to do this is I like to kind of get my stem sentences out first. So this is going to organize my or organize our writing. And we're actually going to start at the at the end. We're going to do this in reverse order. And so today we're just going to get ourselves started with this story. Um, and I would encourage you to take this little bit that we do today and use that as a as a um, kind of a uh, motivation to get you to do this at some point in the future. Don't have to do it tomorrow, no pressure, no rush, no judgment. I know that things are busy, um, but I do think that this is a really, really, um, it can be fun and it's a really important and useful tool. Okay, so our STEM sentences are, in 10 years, I will, and then you would write whatever that part of your story is, in five years, I will. In three years, I will. In one year, I will. In the next three months, I will. In the next month, I will. And in the next week, I will. Okay, so hopefully you can see that by starting at the, at the long term. So 10 years, and we're gonna step back, step back, step back, step back. And we're going way into the future and then coming into the present and really 
making some committed actions right now. What is the next right action that's going to get me moving towards that, um, towards that end goal? <clears throat> so the way that you would do this, um, or you can do this for yourself, I would encourage you to actually pause the video and take three minutes to think, right? So that's just literally thinking and writing or think, say, you can, you can audio record yourself or video record yourself. Just give yourself some time to just start exploring, to start writing. So pause the video, take three minutes, start with the first stem sentence in 10 years, I will, and then write or speak what you want to say. Awesome. Now that you have taken the time to just get this story started, I hope that got your wheels spinning and got your juices flowing a little bit. So you can really start to think about what this is going to look like and really, really commit to writing the story of your future self. Like I said, it doesn't have to be tomorrow. This is one of those tools in your toolbox that you can pull out um, sometime in the future to help you map out the next 10 years of your life journey. And we really look forward to hearing your stories and seeing where you plan to be in 10 years. All right, everybody, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for coming to our workshop and getting to know these tools a little bit better. And I hope, I hope that you can take what you learned here today and apply it in your life with, your, with yourself, with your family and your community and help take these little kernels, these little nuggets of wisdom and these, you know, these easy to use tools that are based on generational wisdom so we can remember those tools forward, carry them forward, use them in powerful ways and make big changes for ourselves, our families and our communities and ultimately the world. So our invitations to you are to come join the Alaskan Oasis Homeschool Collective. We, hold, we have weekly workshops that we're putting on. Um, if, if for collective members, you get an invitation to join us live. We have weekly family coaching that is available. We have daily direct instruction available. So please reach out to us and let us know how we can serve you and your family. We also are looking for contributions to our GoFundMe. We're actively raising money towards purchasing all the direct instruction curriculum that we need and testing kits to take, you know, we're right now we're, we're using the Maloney method, which is awesome. And it's an awesome core curriculum. And then we want to go big. There's so much more than the base reading, writing, and math curriculum. We want to get into expressive writing and pre-algebra and uh, creative writing and all and, and history and science and all these other curriculum um, that use direct instruction. They're super powerful. And we really want to be able to share those with your family and create a you know really big resource library. So please consider consider contributing. Please join us for our weekly workshops. And I hope that we can find a way to help you through our family coaching or direct instruction services. Please like, share, and comment on our socials. You can find us on Facebook, Cruising with Babs, and Our Alaskan Oasis, on Instagram at Our Alaskan Oasis, and, and, um, and then on TikTok as Mistra the Mysterious Elf. Um, so thank you again, and I look forward to seeing you next time. Bye, everybody. <laughs>